Hi. I've been talking about school for a couple of weeks now. Please watch at least the first video in this series before you watch this one. Anyway, I'm done talking about school and ready to talk about what real education would look like. Pretty much everything I'm going to talk about has been done before, and it's helped create mentally healthy, independent young people. If you don't think that's important, if you would rather kids just continue to learn to obey orders and take notes, keep sending them to school. But if you're watching this video, you probably agree with me that we could do a lot better. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. I don't want children to just learn how to survive. That, that's all anyone seems to expect of school nowadays, and for good reason. That's what school does. Gives us just enough skills to get by in the modern world and takes most of our time for, what, 12 years of our lives? Plus university, plus graduate school? But at least it can be said for graduate school that a student is allowed to per pursue their own interests without too many restrictions. <clears throat> when you're in school, you spend most of your waking hours in class or doing stuff for your classes. There's not much time for anything you're interested in. You've just got to hope what you're being told will be interesting or useful. It shows how confused people are about the nature of schooling and how we learn when they ask, if we don't have school, how would kids learn? What about school is conducive to learning? Sitting down for long periods of time? Writing down teachers, things that the teachers in the textbooks tell you to write down? Telling kids what to do regardless of their interests and their skills? If you want kids to learn, you're sending them to the wrong place. What you're doing is taking away the time they could be learning and replacing it with boring, pointless instruction and obedience training. You're taking this little person who can do anything, crushing their spirit and telling them what to do and think. That's not learning. That's indoctrination. But if you've seen the other videos in this series, you know I don't need to go off on a rant about school again. Let's talk about solutions, starting with homeschooling. If you know people anywhere near where you live who could teach your kids some useful or interesting skill, you could start homeschooling them now. From what I've read, homeschooled children tend to be way ahead of their public schooled peers. The same seems to go for Montessori students or any students who've had the freedom to explore their interests rather than passively consuming classroom lectures. You just need to be ready for a different kind of education from what you're used to. But change is scary. And that's one reason so many people don't want to consider their options. But of course, homeschooling needs to be accompanied by the right attitude. If you're laying down the law, lecturing, discouraging questions, restricting the child in all kinds of ways, they're not getting an education. But if you're ready to let them follow their passions and learn for life rather than just learn for tests, you could be ready for homeschooling and unschooling. One good thing about alternatives to school is, for you, the adult usually has much less to do. In school, learning is directed from up on high by a teacher. Teachers spend many unpaid hours preparing marking and so on. But top-down teaching is pretty much the worst way someone can learn, and a guarantee most people will be bored. As an adult and a teacher, often the best thing you can do is move out of the way. Let them figure things out for themselves. There are some things you might have superior knowledge of, 
But the best way to convey it isn't necessarily by telling someone. Students have to be in the right mindset, and they have to practice what they hear. Take this YouTube channel. If you just listen but you never consider the things I say after you listen, or if you just listen while watching TV or something, you're not going to learn. If someone makes you listen to it, you might open your mind to it, but you might also dig in your heels and focus on why it's wrong or deliberately not listen. That's kind of the way we are. If you want to engage with something, you should do it at your own pace. With a video like this, you could always pause it, think about it, look up anything I say, or write it down, and then come back to it. And a class full of 20 or, in some countries, 50 little kids is a bad place to lecture about anything. If I was handed a class like that, I would probably just let them loose on the library. They would learn more from reading anything than listening or not listening to me talk for an hour. The only exception is if you could frame what you're saying in a way that fully captures their attention. And some people can do that. And if that's really the best way to teach something necessary for the kids, then okay. The point is, where their attention goes, that's what they'll learn. I'll bet you could teach kids to write pretty fast by making them type to communicate with allies in some video game they like. In fact, video games have all kinds of positive effects on our brains. Young people right now are playing complex and challenging games and improving their minds in all kinds of ways. And they didn't need their parents to tell them to do it. In fact, their parents might discourage it because they don't realize the beneficial effects of very complex puzzles like a lot of the games we play. All they need from their parents is the infrastructure. A child who's old enough, who has a computer and an internet connection, can do anything. Even just a wide selection of books is enough to discover interests and learn different perspectives. School takes a huge amount of time away from a child. It forces kids to sit down and be quiet for eight hours a day. And then homework adds to that time. And then they've got to sit through tutoring because they didn't learn every subject as easily as those two kids in each class who actually have an affinity for it. School means kids don't get to spend much time with parents and friends. And if you say that's because parents don't have the time to take care of and educate your children, you're right, and that's another major related problem that we should be talking about. School has a near monopoly on a child's time from the age of about five. It consumes their childhood. And if, hey, if they enjoy all of it, and they benefit mentally and physically and spiritually, then that's great. But the ones who don't, should have the option to leave and pursue unschooling. Okay, now I've said this word twice now, so let's take a look at the Wikipedia article on unschooling. Unschooling is an informal learning that advocates learner-chosen activities as a primary means for learning. Unschooling students learn through their natural life experiences, including play, household responsibilities, personal interests and curiosity, internships and work experience, travel, books, elective classes, family, mentors, and social interaction. Unschooling encourages exploration of activities initiated by the children themselves, believing that the more personal learning is, the more meaningful, well-understood, and therefore useful it is to the child. Think of the enormous world of possibilities contained in those few sentences. Think about what subjects could be interesting and useful. If you have a child, you could use them as a reference, but maybe you could think of yourself and what you would have liked when you were younger. 
How could you have learned important things through play? What can you learn by learning to play a sport? You could learn to work as a team to accomplish a fun task. You could learn fairness and respect. What if you learned French grammar through games and simulations? The games are out there, just to download away, and they're more effective than public school classes. Then at the end of the lesson, or the day, or the week, you can debrief them uh, with the student to hammer home any lessons. In fact, in my experience, debriefing is the most important part because that's how people realize they're learning. That's where the analysis takes place, when everyone involved gets to share their opinions. At one age or another, a child knows what they're interested in and will learn more about it if their time is not taken up by homework. With many kids, you wouldn't even need to tell them to study. You could just help them start something and have them come to you with questions. Or even better, they can seek out experts and ask them. If they're a little older, you could help them plan projects by telling them to come up with a vision for how it should turn out and helping them break that vision down into manageable tasks. You could help them find other kids to work with, help them learn teamwork, maybe by helping them discover strengths and assign roles and tasks for projects. Internships and work experience? Great! Think of people who live within 50 kilometers of you. I bet you could find people of all kinds of professions and skill sets. I've always agreed with the expression, it takes a village to raise a child. That's what community is. Or just look here at this picture. What could these kids be learning? They could be learning about the coastal ecosystem, in fact, they could learn about it before they go and then see what they can find and identify. They could learn what sand is and where it comes from. For sure, they'd like to see that under a microscope. They could learn to swim. They could learn to write or design just by drawing in the sand. If we have real communities we can draw on, we have a world of learning resources. Ivan Illich in Deschooling Society says it should be a simple matter to use technology to connect students of similar interests so they can work together, or people who are available to teach what they know. And Illich was writing in 1971. Nowadays all we need is an app. If you know of any apps that could facilitate learning like this, mention them in the comments. Technology doesn't only lead to our isolation. It could help foster community, too. But schools kill community. Instead of letting the community educate and raise the child, the child is sent off to learn with people who are supposed to be experts in a bunch of subjects in ways guaranteed the kids won't like it. Kids could be playing active roles in their communities but they're not allowed. All of their time needs to be used to learn what school tells them to. What a waste. There's no one way to teach or educate someone. School is a one-size-fits-all system in a world of individuals. Education should be tailored. School is forcing all shapes of pegs into the square hole and telling the square peg it's the only one worth anything. There are plenty of examples out there of free schools or democratic schools or anarchist schools or whatever they call themselves. There are lots of links in the description so you can read about the details. Suffice it to say, they operate very differently from normal schools. Now, along with homeschooling, unschooling, and free schooling, I'd like to bring back kids doing apprenticeships with people. Now, I use the word apprenticeship, all I really mean is not working in one-hour blocks. Some apprenticeships could last years. Some might only last a day. 
It could be just one hour a day or even a week. It depends how easy the thing is to learn, how interested the student is in learning, people's availability, and so on. Although I should point out an hour a week isn't very much. But the schedule is less important than giving the child the opportunity to learn as much as they want. Almost anyone in the community can teach a child useful skills. As long as they know teaching requires making the student try things out for themselves. What could kids learn by watching people in your community work? How could they get involved? Do you know anyone who's good at designing things, making things, fixing things, growing things, cooking, chemistry, astronomy, art, sports, martial arts? Does anyone know more than one language? I'm sure you could think of more. I recently saw a Facebook post saying we should be teaching home economics in school. I'm all for teaching skills like cooking and sewing and repairing things, but how could it possibly be better to teach these things for an hour at a time a few times a week in a classroom rather than learning it at home? I guarantee you would learn more in a week from the homemakers in my neighborhood than in a whole semester at school. And yeah, not all parents have the time, but not all parents need to be involved in every minute. One adult could take the local kids for the day, they learn to bake, they go home with a new skill under their belts. Next day they go to a different adult and learn to fix cars. You don't need to cut off their learning after 60 minutes, and you don't need to outfit every school with kitchens and auto body shops, and you don't need to grade and rank kids by how their cakes taste. And we'd be raising kids as a community. If you leave it entirely up to the student, they could take their learning in all kinds of interesting directions, and they will learn. But I expect you'd also want to encourage certain other things, like, I don't know, arithmetic, self-defense, nutrition, maybe history, resolving conflicts, whatever you think is important. There's a lot you can do to teach kids, or, or anyone really, how to think better. I never learned how to learn, how to study and remember things in school, even though I was expected to learn and remember things. But you can learn how to do that. There are books and articles out there about how to use your brain, especially how to use your memory. Um, then they can learn how to think critically. That's another very useful skill nowadays. Um, how to question things and evaluate what they read, hear, and think about themselves. They could learn logic, which I find useful for finding holes in other people's arguments. Same with learning about our cognitive biases. They could learn things like strategic thinking, creative thinking, and it, Anything else that might help them think for themselves in ways I wish I had begun to learn 20 years earlier than I did. You might want to get them exercising and meditating a couple of times a day, too, to keep their brains sharp and their bodies fit. They could jog and listen to audiobooks at the same time. Well, that's what I do. Students might have better ideas. And whatever they learn, they should not be afraid to ask questions or be wrong. Evaluation is not always necessary. If a child is proud of their work, there's no need to tell them everything that's wrong with it. But if you're going to criticize for improvement, try discussing and being specific and following up with students to make sure that they've improved. Because numbers, percentages, and worst of all, letters tell nothing about how good they really are, how they are improving what they know, what they're learning. All it tells you is how good or bad a child is supposed to feel about themselves. Like I said, debriefing is always useful after learning, or 
usually useful after learning. What did you learn? How can you apply it to other situations? What did you do right? What did you do that you could change next time? How can you improve? What will you do the same or differently next time? Where do you want to take your learning next? You can always give kids informal tests to see what they've learned, but in most cases, you could just observe them and see how they're doing. They can usually evaluate themselves if they know how. It's much easier to do that with one or a few kids than with a full class of them. And the things they're learning should not just be counting and spelling and something easy to measure, but also values like independence, teamwork, respect, fairness, and so on. And of course, not all of this stuff needs to be done at home. A classroom might still have its place. It can be where the resources are kept, including a grown-up facilitator. Each room could be different, as is often the case at school. Maybe one room full of books and cushions, one room full of word-working tools, and so on. But there could also be a large common space children are free to roam in, interacting and playing with others. Things can be designed to encourage community. Consider creating autonomous social centers in your community. Self-organized, voluntary, inclusive places like libraries and free schools. There's so much a child can learn through reading. There's no need to force them to read if they really want to do other things, but if they want to read, for the most part, you could let them decide what they want to read. If they like it, they can learn more about it. And if they know other kids who are into the same things, you can build a class around it. The class is led by the students as a group who decide things together. They can decide what they want to learn. When in the future they want to learn different things or just have different schedules, the class is over. Maybe we'll have a class in something else next year. It's organization with a purpose, rather than just the convenience of having all kids in the same room all day. Like I've said, the role of the adult should be minimal. Adults are always trying to tell kids what to think. Try leaving a child alone for a while, maybe with a problem to solve, like a puzzle, or Lego, how to score a three-pointer, or drive a tractor, I don't know, whatever you got. In fact, it's important for kids, or anyone, really, to spend time alone, unencumbered by work someone else wants them to do. It's good to learn to be alone, and solve problems, and learn about yourself that way. You become more self-aware and self-reliant. How do they know what they like? How do they find out what they're good at? Of course, some direction is going to come from parents, at least for the youngest students. Daniel Dennett once said he defined philosophy as coming up with the right questions. That's something you can do with kids. Ask them what they want to learn. Ask them the magic word, why. Don't guide them toward one right answer. Just thinking about what they like is a lesson in itself. You don't have to say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Just, what do you like? What do you want to learn about? Then you can get into how they're going to learn it. Not all lessons or days need to have specific goals, especially when a kid's younger. As they grow up, they'll develop a sense of independence, so they can figure out the right questions for themselves. With much less parental guidance, they can figure out where to find the answers, what skills they need to learn to solve their problems, and so on. They can do all these things alone or in groups. They can learn about things separately and bring their different knowledge and perspectives together to make a project. They could be encouraged to talk about problems and then brainstorm possible solutions. In order to learn, there's usually more than one path to the truth. 
As they get older, they can follow a similar path to solving anything. Identify the problem, identify possible solutions, learn what's necessary, work together to solve it. For older students, you don't necessarily have to go to college or university if you want to keep learning. Try uncollege or learn about how to learn, how to direct your own learning, how to evaluate what you think critically. I learned all those things after I graduated from university when I should have learned them as a child. You can take advantage of the huge amount of university level learning resources available online. I don't know if there's a way to become, say, a doctor or an engineer without going to university, or even if there should be. But if you're mostly interested in social sciences and humanities and so on like me, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars. Finally, if you're interested in educating adults, a lot of the same things that I've said here apply. You don't need to feed them information, or at least it depends on the subject, but don't just lecture them like they did in school. Engage them. Let them discuss and figure things out for themselves. I found the book Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paolo Freire an excellent guide on this topic. And if you were here with me, we could build a class around it. I hope this video has been a useful guide to how to get a real education. If you have any experience in any of these alternatives to school, please let us all know in the comments. If you learned something, please hit like, and if you're new to my channel, check out some of my other videos. See you next week.